Welcome to Electron Line. Here are some denominators that have common factors. So the technique to find the lowest common denominator is simply to take each of the denominators and write them as a product of their factors. Let's use that technique that we've learned before to do that. So we'll take the first two fractions right here. We take the first denominator, 8, and we divide it by the lowest prime number, 2, which gives us 4. We can divide that by 2, which gives us 2. In other words, 8 can be written as 2 times 2 times 2. We do that again with the second denominator. We take that denominator, we divide it by the lowest prime number 2, which gives us 14. Since it's still even, we can divide it by 2, which gives us 7. 7 being a prime number tells us that 28 can be written as a product of 2 times 2 times 7. So now what we've done is we've taken both of our denominators and written them as, as products of their factors or their prime factors. What we're going to do now is find all the prime factors. We have three twos here, we have two twos there, and we have one seven there. We will circle where every prime factor, where it occurs the most. In this case, we have three of them, so we're going to circle these. We don't have to circle these two because those, there's only two of them here and there were three of them here. But we have one seven there, so we have to circle that one. Now we can say that the lowest common denominator is simply the product of all the prime factors that we circled. In this case, it will be 2 times 2 times 2 times 7, which is 56. So the lowest common denominator for this case is 56. All right, if you didn't quite get that, we'll do it again. And after a couple of examples, you'll probably catch on. Here we have two denominators. We're going to write those as a product of their factors as well. So we take the number 9. We divide it by 3, which gives us 3, which means that 9 can be written as 3 times 3. Now we take the denominator 24. Since it's even, we can divide it by 2, which gives us 12. Divide by 2, which gives us 6. Divide by 2, which gives us 3. That means 24 can be written as 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. So here we have two 3's, there we have 1, here we have three 2's. We're going to circle all the prime factors where they occur the most. There's three twos here, so we'll circle these. There's two threes here, so we'll circle these. We don't have to circle this one because there's only one of these and there's two of them over here. Now we know that the lowest common denominator is simply equal to the product of all the factors that we circled. 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. This is 8 times 9 or 72. The lowest common denominator here would be 72. Here we have three fractions, but again we do the exact same thing. We write each of the denominators as a product of its factors. We take the number 4, we can divide that by 2, we get 2, which means that 4 is equal to 2 times 2. The denominator 12 can be divided by 2 to get 6, divided by 2 to get 3, which means that 12 is equal to 2 times 2 times 3, and finally, the last denominator, 18, that's divided by 2 gives us 9, divided by 3 gives us 3, or 18 can be written as 2 times 3 times 3. Now we have three sets of prime factors multiplied together, and we're going to find where they occur the most. We have two twos here, we have two of them here, and one of them there, so I circle these two. I don't have to repeat it here, I only have to do it once, so that's that's enough for the number 2's or the factor 2. Here we have a single 3, there we have two 3's, so we're going to circle these two 3's right here. And now we know that the lowest common denominator is simply the product of all the factors that we circled. 2 times 2 times 3 times 3, which is 4 times 9, which is 36. The lowest common denominator in this case is 36. And that's the easy technique to find the lowest common denominator whenever you get a set of fractions and you're being asked to add them together. The first step you always need to do is find the lowest common denominator. Now that we know how to do that, we're going to show you some examples of how to actually add the fractions together. And that's how it's done.